Aloha everybody. Thank you for returning to the channel at Kona Face Center and we're so glad you're here. Be sure and visit us online and you can find out all kinds of information and be sure and like this video and subscribe because we have things going on all the time. Well, I'm going to get right to it today, but it's going to be a little bit different. I'm not going to be reading the scriptures. I'm going to be paraphrasing what the scripture says and I'm going to give you the scripture list so that you can look up the scriptures. Are we ready? And it's called, In Him, I am what the Word says I am in Him. Okay? In Him, I am the salt of the earth. And that's found in Matthew 5, 13. It's one of my favorite scriptures, and Jesus talks about us to keep our saltiness. The Bible, when it's referring to us being salty, is not how the world looks at it, because when we talk about each other being salty. We're usually talking about a bad attitude. But we're to be salty because salt is a preservative. And we're to preserve the Lord and, and the Word and all that is good in us so we can share that with everybody around us. Okay? In Him, I am the light of the world. Oh my goodness! That's Matthew 5, 14. You know that Jesus is the light. In him there is no darkness. It is so cool. And his spirit, the Holy Spirit, lives in us. So we have that light. And when people are attracted, oftentimes, they'll say, like, I had someone come up to me and say, you never age. And I thought, well, you're not looking too up close. But anyway, it's because people see the Lord. They don't see us. It's, it's a, just an amazing thing. But that light is what draws people to him. It's not us. It's not our flesh, it's not our smile, it's not our whatever personality. It's because it's the light of Jesus in us. And people can see that peace and that joy because the light illuminates that outward. And it's such a wonderful thing, not to mention what it does for us having the light of God Almighty within us. All right, in him, I am a child of God. And this comes from John 1.12. Now, I want to tell you something. All the things that I'm saying that I am, that God says I am, so are you if Jesus is your Lord and Savior. Isn't that exciting? That's why I want you to look these scriptures up and claim them and proclaim them. In him, I am part of the true vine, a channel of Jesus' life. And you could find that in John 15, both verses 1 and 5. Yes, we are part of the true vine, and we want to stay part of the true vine. We don't want to be pruned off. Only the bad stuff in our lives or the stuff that doesn't glorify him. Let's put it that way. We're constantly trying to live as he has lived, as he has exampled, as he has given us in his word. And so if we have areas in our life where we're not doing that, we want him to prune that but we want to be constantly and consistently attached to the vine of Jesus so that we don't die off. We don't want to die off. In him, I am a friend of God. This just is so amazing. This is from John 15, 15. Just think about this, people. A friend of the Almighty Creator who always was, who always has been, who is returning for his people, the Creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I mean, oh my goodness, the galaxies, the ocean, the depths of it, and what's inside there, that whole different world that we don't get to see unless we're divers. And then we only get to see part of it too. But I just want to tell you that in him, we are his friend. So we want you so much to know him and to get to be able to say, in him I am. Okay, and he is the great I am. So in him, I am lives in us. In him, I am chosen and appointed by Jesus to bear his fruit. That's good fruit. And we're not talking about apples and oranges here, but we're talking about the fruit of the spirit, which is so important. We've gone over this in past teachings, so you can go back and listen to that again. John 15, 16 is a scripture where this comes from. We bear good fruit because it's the bad fruit that gets pruned. And I am so picky. Uh, fruit's my favorite food, especially mangoes. No, don't mail them to me. They won't be any good. We grow them here in Hawaii. But anyway, I just absolutely 
enjoy fruit. But if it's sour, I don't want anything to do with it because it's not good fruit. So we don't want to be sour in our walk with the Lord. We want to be good, sweet fruit. Okay, let's look at, this is in Romans 6 and 18, and it says in him, I am a slave to righteousness. How cool is that to be freed from being a slave to sin, which the Bible talks about, but we become a slave to righteousness because of his righteousness. In him, I am enslaved to God. Romans 6, 22. I'll tell you what, being enslaved to God is like being treated like the most wonderful human being on the planet. Any of us can say we're his favorites because he loves each and every one of us so very much. In him, I am a child of God. God is spiritually my father. And you could find that in several places. I'll give you a couple. Romans 8, 14 and 15, Galatians 3, 26, and Galatians 4, 6. Now, if I'm talking too fast, you can go back and rewind and get the scriptures. In him, I am a joint heir with Jesus, sharing his inheritance with him. Now, come on, we get the inheritance of Jesus, the Son of God, the Almighty God, the Messiah. Yep, just look at Romans 8, 17. In him, I am the temple the dwelling place of God, his spirit and his life dwells in me. Can it get any better than that? You know, people were the church. The walls, the building, all that stuff is not the church. We make up the church, the people of God. And it says that um, we're the temple, that God dwells in us, and that's found in 1 Corinthians 3.16, and you can also find it there in uh, chapter 6 and verse 19. In him, I am united to the Lord and am one spirit with him. That's right. We're one. So that means because he created me, made me a new creation in him. I am brand new. The old things are past. The new things have come in him. And I can act like him. I can have the same attitudes as him. Yep, I can be salty. And that's found in 1 Corinthians 6 and 17. In him, I am a member of Jesus' body. We are all members. And there's some great scripture on this, and you should look into it. Because it doesn't matter what part of the body you are, just so you're part of the body. That's the important thing. We all have different anointings and different giftings and different callings given by the Holy Spirit, given by the Father, given by the Son. Oh yeah, read Romans 12, 1 Corinthians 12. You'll be able to find all that in there. So the scripture that I'm referring to today, right now, when I'm saying in him I am a member of his body, 1 Corinthians 12 and 27 and Ephesians 5 and 30. In him I am a new creation and I just love this. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 and we have a song called New Creation. So it's really good. So listen to our music too. In him I am reconciled to God and am a minister of reconciliation. What does that mean? Number one, when we come to Jesus, we are reconciled back to God. Because when we live outside of the Lord, we are separated from God. That's what hell is. That's what hell is going to be. Except in hell, it's going to be too late. And we're never going to be able, those that go, to be able to commune with God again. So we want to definitely be reconciled to Him and then we want to be a conduit to help other people be reconciled together. Marriages, families, friends, all kinds of things. No division. If we're one body, what good would division be? If I got cut in half or had a limb taken off that was I had all my life and all of a sudden I'm not used to having it not there, it would be very difficult. Okay, in him. I am a child of God and one in Jesus. I wanted to make sure I wasn't reading the same one. We're his children. We are a son of the Most High God. And this is found in Galatians 4, verses 6 and 7. In him I'm a saint. Yes, you could call yourself, I'm Saint Terry. You are saint whoever you are. 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 2. Ephesians 1 and verse 1. Philippians 1.1 1, 1, and Colossians 1 and 2 are some good places to look that thought, that concept, that truth from the Bible up. 
in him. I am God's workmanship, his handiwork, born again in Jesus to do his work. And you know, God, do, God promises that he doesn't give us anything that we can't handle. He enables us by his grace. But he's not going to ask us to do something that we can do on our own. He's going to ask us to do something that he can partner with us, which makes it even more exciting. And that's found in Ephesians 2 and 10. In him, I am a fellow citizen with the rest of God's family. Ephesians 2.19. Jason preached a great message on this last night. Of course, you won't see this particular uh, recording for about a month because we record a little bit ahead of time. But his live message, and that would have been from June, what was yesterday, 23rd? June 23rd, 2021. Yay, I got the date right. I get that messed up a lot, but that's okay because I'm in him. Okay, in him I am God's workmanship, his handiwork, born again in Jesus to do his work. And that is found in Ephesians 2.10. In him, I am a fellow citizen with the rest of God's family. And that's also found in Ephesians 2.19. There's a lot of in hymns in Ephesians. In him, I am a prisoner of God. That's in Ephesians chapter 3 and 4, both verse 1. 3, 1 and 4, 1. And being a prisoner of God is not like being a prisoner in this world. It is a good kind of prison, I'll tell you what. There is so much freedom because it's Jesus who sets us free. In him, I am righteous and holy. Yeah, God says you're to be righteous and you're to be holy because he is. And he enables us by his grace. And that's Ephesians 4 and 24. In him, I am a citizen of heaven, seated in heaven right now. We are actually seated in heavenly places, the Bible says. Look at Ephesians 2, 6 and Philippians 3 and 20. We are already, our kingdom is the kingdom of God. It's not the kingdom of the earth. So we need to, to be kingdom beings, not earthlings. We have to, it, while we're in this body suit that's breathing and the heart's pumping, we are on this earth. But once that suit gets unzipped, we are forever, ever with him. But we're still in the kingdom of God now. And that is such good news. Good news, good news, good news. In him I am hidden with Jesus in God. I'm hidden. He protects me. I'm, I'm found in Jesus, which is such a great place to be found because I'm a joint heir with him. Everything he has, he has for us people. This is so good. And this is Colossians 3, 3. In him, I am an expression of the life of Jesus because he is my life. That's found in Colossians 3, 4. So you could get two in hymns in a row. In him, I am chosen of God, holy and dearly beloved. He loves us so much. He calls us his beloved. Colossians 3 and 12, 1 Thessalonians 1 and 4. In him, I am a son and a light and not of darkness. Oh, hallelujah. You know, it doesn't take a lot of light to light up a room. But when we are in him, the room is bright. Our lives are bright. Even when we're going through difficult times, that supernatural peace, that supernatural love can take a hold of us. You could find this about being the son of light and not being in darkness in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 5. In him, I am a holy partaker of a heavenly calling. My calling is so much greater than what the Lord uh, has for me just on this earth to do as an earthling. But he has called me and supernaturally anointed me and you if you are in him. And that is found in Hebrews 3.1. In him, I am a partaker of God. I share in his life. How awesome is that? I mean, can it be any greater than sharing in the life of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords? That's found in Hebrews 3 and 14. In him, I, have one, I am one of God's living stones, being built up in Jesus as a spiritual house. 1 Peter 2 and 5. We're spiritual beings. We need to be led by the Spirit, walk by the Spirit, and not let the flesh be in control of our lives. Because we don't have to. And the flesh usually does ugly. The Spirit does beautiful. In Him, I am a member of a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's special own, God's own special possession. 
That's found in 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10. People, we are kings. We are glorious in God's sight. He loves us. We are a part of a holy nation, the nation of God, the nation of the kingdom of God. It is so awesome. In him, I like this, I am an alien. I like being called an alien. Have you been reading about all the alien ships and stuff? It's pretty cool, all that's coming out, but that's not the kind of alien we are. In him, I am an alien and stranger to this world in which I temporarily live. This is a temporary abode for us. This is not eternal. Thank God. There is so much turmoil in, in this dwelling place called earth. There won't be any of that turmoil. Nothing but peace. Nothing but good. Nothing but life forevermore in his kingdom. And that's from 1 Peter 2.11. So see, you can call yourself an alien on this earth. In him, I am an enemy of the devil. Woo-hoo-hoo! I like this so much. I don't like the devil. He is evil. You ever notice that E-V-I-L? Put a D in front of it. It spells devil. In him, I am his enemy, and he knows it. That's from 1 Peter 5 and 8. In him, I am a child of God, and I will resemble Jesus when he returns. Oh, man, that mirror is going to look so good. I can't wait. It won't be aged, I don't think, unless I'll be just like this if it's time for me to go home, and then I'll be happy with it, but I'm not going to have flesh. So I doubt it wrinkles because it never ages. That's exciting, ladies. Maybe gents, too. So that is found in 1 John 3, 1 and 2, that we are a child of God and we look like him. In him, I am born of God and the evil one cannot touch me. Hallelujah. 1 John 5, 18. He tries all the time. You just need to be in faith and not fear. You need to be in faith and not fear. I can tell you some great stories about that, but not today. In him, I am not the great I am. Exodus 3.14, John 8.24, and 28 and 58. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm made in your image. I'm a joint heir with you. I'm part of the kingdom of God. You've anointed me. You've appointed me. Everything is good, as talked about in 1 Corinthians 15 and 10. In him, I am victorious and more than a conqueror. And I really like how the um, complete Jewish Bible says this. It says, I am a super conqueror. And that's who we are in Jesus. And that's 1 Corinthians 15 and 56 and Romans 8 and 37. In him, I am blessed chosen by God, without blame, and loved. Do you know that Jesus isn't mad at us? He remembers our sin not. In other words, he doesn't remember it. He promises that, and he cannot lie. And that's found in Ephesians 1 and verses 3 and 4. In him I am redeemed and forgiven. Ephesians 1 and 7. Oh, Ephesians is such a good book, especially that, that first chapter, because it just talks so much about who we are in him. I'm almost done. In him, I am an inheritor of all that God has, a joint heir with Jesus. And you'll find that in Ephesians 1.11 and Romans 8.17. And I'm on my last, 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 last of the last. So you ready? In him, I am full of trust, faith, and have been given the guarantee. You know who our guarantee is of our eternal life? The gift of the Holy Spirit. Yes, he is our guarantee. And you can watch the four-part series on the baptism in the Holy Spirit anytime you want. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. Well, I have enjoyed being here today and letting you know who we are in Christ Jesus our Lord. He is awesome, and I pray in Jesus' name that you are drawn to him, that you give your life to him, that you serve him all the days of your life. God bless you in Jesus' name. You alone, Lord, made me a brand new creation. It is only by your Spirit could this have been done.